Hi there, everybody. My name is Kate, and welcome to my channel, Trinergy Awakens Naturally. Um, I wanted to tell you, I got some inspiration, some intuitive thoughts, <clears throat> excuse me, thoughts today uh, about jealousy. And jealousy is a real nasty one. That's a that's a mean old monster. It's quite an ogre, ogre an ogre, an ogre and an ogre. <laughs> it makes ogres turn into real uggers, you know, um, that it's a very ugly frequency. It's very dense, and it's not very... Um, enlightened when we're jealous. I mean, holding out just envy, jealousy, those things of, um, I want what you have because I don't have it, or I want what you have, even though you have it, I want that because it's better for some reason that whatever it is out here, it's ultimately rooted in something within each of us that would look at another person and believe they have something that either we should have too, or they shouldn't have it at all. It should be mine. And when we start shooting some stuff, <laughs> Remember, should and a lot of other things, you know, shit go together. That the the sh words um sh and shame and shit all go together. So I throw them in the same category. That when we're looking at someone else and really believing that they shouldn't have that, they don't deserve that, we're starting to evaluate. That's where jealousy comes in, and that that runs a very very dangerous road because we're starting to get into the denser and denser and denser energy of not really being able to express ourselves through that God seed understanding or that universal energy understanding or the Christos consciousness, however we identify with our unified field, our own spiritual interaction with the cosmos, whatever it is, wherever it lands, heaven, um, wherever. I, I don't know any of the other ones, honestly, but wherever it is we land in our spiritual understanding or our religious studies, if we're not able to connect with that, we can easily, easily, easily get locked into the real, you know, 3D earth thing that this is it. And it's all about who has the most toys, you know, um, and whoever dies with the most toys wins or something like that. I don't know if that ever made sense to anybody else, but that was the dumbest thing. It came out when I was a teenager, I think, and I thought... I've had toys and I can't imagine dying and being happy when I wouldn't be here to use them anymore, especially when I found out that you can't take them with you when you go. I'm like, that makes no sense whatsoever, but I've come to find out since I was a teenager, teenagers many, many years ago that much of what the world is about doesn't make sense to me um, because I tend to look at things in a slightly different way. Um, a hugely different way in a lot of concerns um, because it doesn't make sense to me to why would I covet what somebody else has it may make me yearn to have something of my own however I want my own if I took yours it means that you wouldn't have it and that's where I come from I know that's kind of an oddball way of looking at things however I think that people that are um, empaths generally kind of have that angle that I don't want to take from you to have what you have I might want to have something similar to what you have, but I definitely wouldn't want to have exactly what you have because you already have it and I don't want to duplicate it. That would be, you know, another consideration aside from just st stealing yours is I don't want the same thing you have, you know, <laughs> that's just a carbon copy. That's no thanks. Um, but I think more than anything, when we're in that yearning place, if we're looking and wondering why is she so this or why is she so that, or why does he have this and I should have that, um, we get into a real evaluation of us in terms of another person. We start evaluating their worth against our worth. And really and truly, this really, it hurts, you know, to have to admit it. It's true though. It's really true that when we're looking to evaluate, we get into that evaluation process where we're weighing, you know, the good and the bad of the other person against us. Well, I deserve this more than that. That is really about what's missing in me. What is missing in me that I think that I need to turn this into a contest between me and another person who may or may not have any idea whatsoever that those thoughts are going on in my mind that, well, she doesn't deserve that. That other person may or may not know. And if they don't know, I've turned this into some whole, you know, uh, scales thing where I obviously feel threatened by the fact that I don't have what they have. And rather than really spending any time looking at what is it that they have and do I really want that or is it just what it suggests about that person that they have more than me? And then turn that even further into why does that bother me? What is it about me that I'm missing or misunderstanding about what I do have that isn't enough? 
And that can be tough because I've definitely, of course, I'm a human being. I've definitely had periods of time in my life where I looked at other people and thought, you know, I want to have that too. <laughs> I was also younger and, you know, uh, with a lot less finances. And then I went through a period of time where I had, you know, very little finances at all. I mean, scratching to feed all the animals in the house and myself. So I learned to repurpose things. And I really found, you know, a lot of um, empowerment in being able to say, well, I don't, I cannot get this right now. However, if I wait two months, I can get this then and started using all those tools that um, I had learned and just never really took seriously because it was never a major issue. I never wanted a whole lot. And then I got married and had a whole married life where, you know, we were very uh, well off and I didn't have to worry about anything. My tastes were not extravagant. We didn't have a mansion. However, I also wasn't looking to get one. You know, we had a very modest living that was very conducive to um, meeting my needs, I thought. And when I went through a divorce, I realized, well, fingers and, you know, toenails and fingernails with all the polish and all that stuff, that's going out the door. That's one of the first things to go by. You don't need that. And when I started really looking at, you're at the point where that was where jealousy went out the window because it no longer was about, I wasn't in that game of being married and then, you know, looking like the keeping up with the Joneses or something. Not that I really had that ethic, but it did affect me every now and then to go, well, I want that too. I want to have, be able to take a vacation like that too. I want to be able to go do this, that, the other too. And then when it was stripped away and I had very, very little finances, it got easier because, well, you don't have the, the toenails and, you know, fingernails. You're not going for the mani petty. You're going to, that's the first thing to scratch and go. You're not going there anymore. You're not getting your hair done anymore. You're not doing this anymore. I mean, the list was long and there was such a burden. Honestly, there was such a burden relieved of, oh, cool. I didn't realize just how much I was spending and not just finances, my energy as well of being concerned about, well, I've got to get, this doesn't look right. Well, I don't like this and I don't like that. And now when Google photo very kindly reminds me what I looked like five years ago and it brings up a picture, <laughs> I am super shocked because I look and I see, oh my goodness, there's a woman that had the hair and the nails and, you know, all this stuff. And it's not that that's bad. It just, it was such a relief. And I was able to find that I wasn't looking at other people's nails because I no longer had a comparison. I wasn't looking at other people's hair because I no longer had a comparison. I only had mine, which got scragglier and scragglier. Um, Soup's excited going for a haircut for the first time in like four years. Um, next month, I'm super duper excited. Um, had to save up for that one because that's a very big expense for somebody that specializes in curl and long hair. Yeah, you gotta pay a lot for that, <laughs> but I'm super excited about it and because I waited I didn't just go to you know supercuts or whatever because I could I wanted what I wanted and there's been great joy in releasing all of the jealousy and the nah, 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 because I've been working diligently to save the money to be able to go to the hairdresser that I want I'm gonna drop probably three hundred dollars at least however when I do, I know that there it is, there's the exchange and I'm not jealous of anybody because I'm more busy being or I'm busier <laughs> I'm busier. English grammar is the first thing to go on the fly, right? Um, I'm busier being more proud of, prouder. What the hell? I'm busier being prouder of myself because I've been able to stay in the discipline and not just get in the instant gratification. It does suck. It really does suck when we're not gratified ever. There were long periods of, you know, food was lean. It was, you know, a little hard to feel the gratitude there. But I can tell you now that when I wait for something, when I learned to, I was forced to, to budget and I got out of that jealousy thing where it's, that's not fair. I should have this and I should have that. It became much more acute to pay attention to what you do have and then get very good about repurposing and retooling, reschooling re and refiguring and rejiggering how you're gonna do this because you don't have time to be worried about what other people are doing. You don't have time to be worried about, well, what's that person's job? How come they get paid to do that? You know, why can't I? You know, all of these, I'm gonna weigh myself against you. And it really, honestly, that stuff came, came down to some intense inventory of, okay, get inside your own head, get inside your own quantum closet, get on in there and start digging around, get the broom out and start dusting immediately, <laughs> start getting out the cobwebs because you're concerned about things that are re really related to you.
Did you like those nails and everything? They were pretty enough, but when I think about the actual cost of them and what I gained from them was really about just an appearance that now I could care less. I look at those pictures that Google reminds me of and I go, oh my God, I can't believe that's the same woman. You know, like, wow. And I'm not making a, a statement against anybody who has, you know, aesthetic things that they put their um, time and resources into. I'm not. I'm just saying for me, it was not feeding the right part of me in the right way. I thought it was feeding my self-image and helping me to feel better about myself. And what it was doing was giving me a false sense that I fit in with some sect of society that wears um, acrylic nails and you know gets the haircut every eight weeks routinely and religiously, you know, um, and wore a certain brand. I mean, it wasn't real high-end brand specific, but you know, um, it it can't be that it must be this for shoes or or whatever. And it was never high. I mean, I'm just, my practicality will not allow me to spend, you know, a, an exorbitant amount on everything. So now I'm forced to choose and it keeps me way busier wondering about, okay, I have a, a 13, 14, 100 year old car. I don't know. I think it's a 2008 um, Subaru Forester that I knew when I bought it. This thing's ancient. However, that's what's in my budget. And I'm not going to be jealous about the person over there that got a better car. Why would I? Because my sights are down the road much further than just right now. My instant gratification would have put me into a loan that I could have afforded and would have, you know, gotten me a nicer car. However, it would have been driven from the wrong place. It would have been driven from that need in me that was looking to be satisfied with something and a newer car was not going to do it even if I had gotten one. Even if I had gotten one, the need of that jealousy and that looking around and envying and and God forbid making decisions out of that place, that's where we end up with material possessions that we may or may not love. And what I really want is the long-term goal later is I want to do this first. This is what's more important to me. And having that kind of strategy and that kind of discipline, honestly, I've found that that's the best thing for me personally. And it keeps me out of even remotely looking around and wondering what anybody else is doing by comparison. I'm not fond of comparison anyway. I never have been. But now that I'm in a better position, you know, and grown more and gotten more mature through that experience of a divorce, and, you know, going through the process, if you're going to learn how to live on a much smaller budget, you're going to learn how to really, really, really get very, very disciplined about how much you spend, where you spend, why you spend. And it forced me. The universe is always working for our good. It really is. Things don't happen, you know, to us and then walk away without getting any lesson from it if we're, if we're wise, you know. And so I figured if I'm here, and it's this situation, I better pick up every bit of this that I can. And the universe jumped in and said, cool, we're on board. You finally got it now that you're going to figure out through this process of not having, lacking the, you know, the hair, the nails and all this stuff. You're going to figure out through that process what it means to have respect for those things should you choose to ever pick them up in the future. But you're going to have respect for where you didn't have respect before, that you were filling a hole that... Get in here and start working on that and get all the clutter and the cobwebs and the bullshit out of your out of your quantum world here, your little quantum self-esteem closet. We need some work in there, Kate, because it doesn't have anything to do with your hair, your nails, your toenails, your anything, nothing like that. It has nothing to do with that. And I found when I was able to really let go of those things, didn't look necessarily very pretty. But it was an illustration to me that I no longer really look around and go, oh, you know, those, those person's nails are really nice. I think I'll get that too. I don't even think about it. And I don't think about my toenails. They look like, you know, <laughs> gnome toes probably. <laughs> but it's, there's no comparison anymore because the comparison went away. There is no comparison, Kate. It's just you. If you're looking out there to make sure you're keeping up with somebody in comparison to you, I didn't care so much about that they kept up with me. I wanted to make sure I fit in somewhere. Well, where are you going to fit in? Well, when you're broke, you fit in with yourself. <laughs> That's what I found out. And, you know, I can't say I loved poverty a whole lot, but I sure learned a whole lot. I learned how to change the way that I eat and get very, 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 very specific about food waste and stuff. That's no longer part of your life. You're not going to do all of those wasteful things that you used to do while you're holding some sort of um, envy or jealousy or coveting, uh, even the slightest 
what anybody else is doing. You're too busy now, Kate, doing this. But when we choose to go the other direction and we already have everything that we want, or even if we don't, wherever we are in that, if we're really jealous and we're just in that just nasty spot of nothing, it's because we feel devalued somewhere in us that we're not getting what we deserve by our standards. Now, Five years ago, I'd have been happy to tell you that I don't deserve this by my standards, you know. I went from having, you know, a very wonderful, modest life to it went lean. What the hell just happened to my world? And that was an ego slap. That was a huge one. I mean, like, all righty then, we're going to figure this out. And, you know, it took me a minute. It really did. It took a lot of wallowing on my floor, crying and moaning and carrying on like a beached whale just <laughs> of trying to get it. And it really came into clarity the more and more and more I could let go of all the physical possessions. All the Oh, you don't have that happen anymore. You don't have that desire anymore. Nope, you, you don't. If you don't want to be driven crazy, stop having the desire to have the money to go do that. You don't. Just live with it and get peaceful with it. And now I have more than enough money to do everything I want to do. I don't have to watch everything so closely. You know, I'm not a millionaire. However, I'm okay with that. I've reached peace at every place that I've been. And because I honestly, I believe it, that if we reach peace in our poverty, then we're wide open to all the abundance that just flows in because we're peaceful on any level of it. I don't think anybody has to take a vow of poverty, and I just certainly didn't mean to. <laughs> Nor did I appreciate being kind of helped into that position of submission, but I'm glad that I was because it's given me a very, very different perspective of what jealousy and envy and coveting other people's belongings, their stuff, the way they look, you know, blah, blah, all this. It gave me a completely different perspective that is so helpful now because there's so many people that are working on so many less resources, and yet you still have a large um, body of people that are high profile that look like they're doing fine and so that can really draw on our self-esteem and make us feel really bad about ourselves and make us feel you know the shame of stuff that that's what drives us to do that stuff in the first place and it really is true there's no reason in the world why I had to be doing any of the things that I was doing extraneous you know to myself as a person there wasn't any reason other than the fact that I didn't feel worthy enough as my own individual that I could just schlep around wearing my, you know, jeans and t-shirt and be just as okay as if I was in a suit of some kind that was $500 or a ball gown, you know? Um, it really mattered not, uh, matters not at this point. However, back then it did. It felt very shaming to me that, oh my goodness, I, you know, this shouldn't be, why shouldn't it be that way? Do you not get your turn here on earth to earn your spot where apparently you needed to earn a few nickels and dimes over there and figure out how to live on nickels and dimes and have some respect for the resource? So I don't know if that's made sense. I certainly hope it does. And 1808 just passed by. I'm going to take that as a positive. Thank you very much. Um, and I do hope that you're well. And remember, get within your skin because you're divine. It's absolutely fine. And... Your divine, whatever you call it, however you buzz into it, you know, call it, uh, zip up to it, however you get there, please reach out to it and ask that, that entity, that being, that oneness, that God, that source energy, whatever you call that, whatever you call that unified force of pure loving frequency, please get in touch with that and ask that, how can I fill the deficiency in me that would make me jealous, angry, or, um, covetous or envious of somebody else's life, somebody else's something. That means that I'm very dissatisfied somewhere in me that that's a level of dis dissatisfaction when we're jealous and angry about another person's life or their stuff that we actually express it to the level of it really bothering us. You know, having a fleeting moment of, oh, I really wish I had one of those. Um, you know, if you ask me a, an hour later on some of those comments that I've had, you know, um, in the last couple of months, I've seen some things like, oh, I really wish I could have that. And an hour later, I probably wouldn't even be able to tell you what it was. Or worse, I've seen things and went, oh, that's really cute. I think I want one of those too. I want one of those too. And then I actually got close enough to it and went, mm, actually, I don't want that. <laughs> because that's really just my soul's calling to say, hey, could you pay attention to filling me? Because you're looking to fill me with buying something out there. And that's not how that works. <laughs> you can't energetically fill me up with a material acquisition of some kind. 
Now, material acquisitions can be fun. They're not the, the complete job, though, for me personally. How other people reach or don't reach into their quantum closet to fill their holes and not, that's, that's not my business. I just know for myself when I'm feeling that sense of, you know, that's not fair. <laughs> I have that conversation with myself a lot about that's not fair. Do you know how many times I hear, oh, poor baby, let's talk about it. You know, let's see what we can do to make it fair. Never. Go ahead and understand that that's a never. That's about get jiggy with yourself, Kate. Get honest with yourself. Yourself. And let's talk about why you want that. What need is it in you that you are trying to fill? Because you taking it for another person is not what you're after, but you're feeling a sense of disparity between, well, I want that too. And it would be like me buying a brand new car just because I'm entitled to it. I should have it. I'm an old lady. I should, I'm, I have the right to not drive a million year old car. And you know, the truth is, Honestly, dude, I love my car. I love Matilda. She's, I think she's a 2008, which makes her a million, but she's a Subaru. So I mean, I'm, I'm good. And I love her. She's a stick shift and she absolutely is gold. Like gets me everywhere I want to go on all these creepy little mountains where, you know, she's just doing her thing. And I feel such great comfort in it. And it's like, would you have the same relationship with a brand new car? I don't know. I just know I have this car and I have great respect for the fact that I have learned. Stop looking out there about you could have had the, the newer car that you wanted or thought you wanted. And you were told to sit down and don't go there. I had a very deep sense. Don't go there because you're here to learn a lesson about how you and your budget are going forward. And it's not going to be to keep looking out here. What you're looking out here to fix is in here. And that's not going to help you to go to a, a, a car lot to try to do that. That gets people into a whole lot of debt and a whole lot of trouble. So anyhow, that's enough on that. Thank you very much for your time. I do appreciate it. And as I said, get within, within your skin because you're divine. It's absolutely fine. Even if you feel jealous from time to time, it's all right. Get in there and start asking questions. That'll answer, I promise you. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye, friends. Bye.